Defy theater is basically a technique that started mm, probably around like the 60s and the 70s. Mm -hmm. And it's an idea that instead of having a traditional theater where you have someone write a script, in Defy it's much more democratic. So the idea is like a group of people come together and often the subject matter is being inspired. It could be from a poem, it could, it could still be from a script or from even like a, a video or a song or a theme. And you basically then decided that from that is a your launching point and then everyone sort of contributes into creating this piece together. So there's not, like at least in the initial process, it's not about a uh, special skill of like you just be an actor, you just be a writer, I will just be a designer. But it's more a collaborative approach to build something. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind it is really trying to build something that is have a, a more contemporary relevancy to uh, um, relating to that subject matter. I would say that uh, device work is really organic process. So sometimes at the very beginning, as, as you all experience, you didn't know what is going to happen next. And, uh, but, but at the end today, you know what, what we are going to show to the audience. So, so it's kind of like evolving and then um, organic and sometimes really um, nervous because you don't know what, what you, will, you, you may have at the end. But, but that's also the beauty of it. This is a particularly difficult project for designers because uh, in most of the time, design is done before the rehearsal begins. But in device work, we have to watch how it's developed. And this is about process. And so I wanted to give uh, this set movable and very simple and arranged in different way and I wanted it to be very simple raw wood so it's uh, it can show it's being developed it's being created it's being shaped by all this cast ensemble creators and writers on stage. So Antigone is set in ancient Greece and there are two princesses, Ismene and Antigone, and their brothers Polynices and Teocles have just killed each other in battle. Creon gave the defending brother uh, military honors and basically banished the other brother to be scavenged and to live in purgatory. The whole play is basically centered on that conflict of that there is a law made by her uncle saying that she can't bury her brother and she tries to, she goes about doing it anyway and it causes conflict within the kingdom. In terms of this particular project, uh, I am going to back up a little bit about the theater department. Um, our theater department is really interested in uh, encouraging creativity among our students in, in a way that allows them to be more entrepreneurial of their own process. So for example, an actor don't often think that they will also be a writer for the piece. And by creating a device project scenario, then an actor, at, as in this situation, will also be writing the script. Or somebody um, who is a studio art major <laughs> may end up be performing <laughs> in the piece. Mm -hmm. so, so we wanted to basically encourage students to express themselves and find the different ways and avenue to boost creativity. So because I do a lot of this kind of work professionally, the theatre department asked me to create a piece with students. And uh, uh, at that same time, I was really um, inspired or affected by how the country decided to not bury the Boston bomber, um, the older brother who passed away. And so it makes me start thinking about, oh, um, related back to the idea of Antigone, not able, the brother wasn't being allowed to be buried, what does it mean? And also Antigone being like a protest figure. Um, um, so I was just starting to get inspired by this one particular uh, story. And so I feel like that, oh, you know, a couple, what is it, two years ago? There was like Occupy Stony Brook, that is spring out of Occupy. Wall Street, so I feel like that there's a lot of youth energy related to protests and or, or um, 
um, uh, interested in social change in some form, but at the same time, uh, there was also a sense of very um, uh, sense of apathy and sense of uh, I have no control over a bigger system at the same time existing among young people. So I'm curious as to how we can then create a piece that kind of talk about this. And so that's how the Antigone project sort of happened. Well, in the beginning, all of us um, read a, different, a bunch of different plays, versions of this play, and we all basically had a discussion with what each thing meant to us and what we wanted to contribute. For a lot of the time, I didn't see how it was going to come together at all. We were writing these different scenes, and it didn't seem like it was one cohesive play until we strung it along and somehow it just fit, and it was kind of amazing. Antigone is actually a joint project between two theater classes here at Sunnybrook. I was in class with the crew, but I was also required to go to rehearsals too, so I got to see the piece as it came together. To really be a part of it since day one, and we got to create like, almost every single scene, like, scene from scratch. Behind me here is the artwork for the play, The Antigone Project. We're using these painted images of messages of hope, peace, protest, uh, each panel will be used uh, one per night on the show, so I'm pretty excited about it because it's a pretty epic uh, operation here. Uh, the story of Antigone that we perform is important because we're trying to send a message to people about standing up for what they believe in. And if they believe in something, they need to do something about it and not just sit back. I don't think that your voice is ever too small, because it's not, and I think that all of us can relate to Antigone in some kind of way because we all have beliefs and things that we value that we would stand up for and or die for, so that's my message.